If you're looking for a cocktail book that isn't just filled with recipes, but instead it illustrates how to better understand those recipes, then stay tuned because today we're going to be looking into the Bartender's Manifesto written by legendary bartender Toby Maloney. Welcome to Cocktail Limelight. I'm your host, Eric Castro, and today we're gonna to be reviewing a book that I'm absolutely smitten with. Now, I know that normally on this show, I tend to examine really old cocktail books, you know, cocktail books that are 80 years old, 100 years old, sometimes even older. But what we're doing today is examining a new book, one that I really think you should check out. The book is called The Bartender's Manifesto, and the reason why I think it's so important is that this book isn't a 101. It's not an entry level book for cocktails. Instead, it's written for the bartender that ranges from intermediate to advanced. Now that's not to say that if you're a beginner, you won't get anything from the book. However, a lot of stuff will go over your head. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Toby Maloney's work, he's the owner of the James Beard award-winning bar, The Violet Hour, as well as the beverage director of Mother's Ruin, both of which are in Chicago. Now, one of the reasons why I enjoy this book so much is that it takes the opportunity to examine cocktails as well as dive deep into the different aspects of cocktail creation. Now for any of you out there that have seen the Cocktail Limelight video on cocktail creation, you probably already know that I'm really nerdy about this stuff and I really enjoy examining all the aspects when it comes to creating new cocktails. Which is why I found this book so useful as Maloney lays out tons of great insightful advice that's actionable. And by that, I mean that there are tips and advice in this book that you can implement into making better cocktails today. In the book, he discusses many of the variables that go into a drink, variables such as ice, temperature, glassware, how they can all profoundly impact the final taste of your cocktail. In addition, he covers texture and viscosity at great length. So in other words, this cocktail book gets a lot more in depth than a lot of the other books out there. In fact, one of my favorite things about the book is that it creates a common terminology for much of what goes into creating cocktails, which is indispensable, as it makes it easier for us to communicate and express various techniques and processes behind the bar. And all of that is why I find this book so intensely refreshing. And speaking of intensely refreshing, let's go ahead and make some of the cocktails that are found in this book. Now the bulk of this book features recipes from not only Toby himself, but also from his team at the Violet Hour. However, today, I'm only gonna be covering three of Toby's original creations. Now, the first cocktail we're gonna be making is called the Julia in Romeo, and it's a cocktail that I first tried for the first time 13 years ago when I was working at Rick House. The way I got around to trying it was that Toby did a guest shift with us in San Francisco, and I tried it and I enjoyed it so much that the cocktail ended up going on our seasonal menu. It's a riff on the east side, which in itself is a riff on the south side, which is why I feel it's a good example of how to riff on a riff. But one sip of this cocktail for yourself, and I'm sure that you'll agree. Now let's make one. First, we're gonna start out with three cucumber slices, as well as a small pinch of salt. Next, we're gonna go ahead and muddle that up. Now you can go ahead and muddle a little more aggressive with cucumber, as it's gonna be much more resilient than something such as mint or basil. Next, I'm gonna add 10 to 12 mint leaves, and muddle this ever so gently. Next, I'm gonna add five drops of Angostura bitters, as well as five drops of rose water. Now be careful, because rose water is one of those ingredients that if you add too much, you can quickly ruin the cocktail. Now it's time to add three quarter ounce lime, three quarter ounce simple syrup, and two ounces of London dry gin. Next, we're gonna add some ice and shake. In this cocktail, we're gonna be double straining so we get rid of all the chunky little bits of mint. You don't have to worry about getting any of those pieces in your teeth. Now for the garnish, we're gonna add one mint leaf. one drop of rose water, and three drops of Angostura bitters. And there you have it, folks, the Juliet and Romeo. Remember, Juliet's name comes first because the woman always comes first. Absolutely delicious. 
and every bit as good as the first time I had it back in 2009. Now the second drink that we're gonna be making is off of page 116 of the book and was created by Maloney back in 2007. Now the reason why this drink intrigued me off of the bat was that it was built on crushed ice, but it also had an egg yolk. Now that's not a combination that you see very often. And one thing I've learned is that whenever you see a drink with a curious build, it's either really bad or very few of them in this case are absolutely sublime. But don't just take my word for it. Let's try one out now. To start out with, we're gonna do one dash of lemon bitters enhanced with three quarter ounce fresh lemon juice. Next, we're gonna add a quarter ounce of simple syrup, followed up with a fat half ounce of cherry liqueur. Now for the spirit in this drink, we're gonna be adding two ounces of white rum. Now for that yolk I was talking about, I'm gonna add it to the drink, but first I have to separate it from the egg white that's in there. We're gonna go ahead and drop it right into our cocktail. Now let's go ahead and give it a good dry shake to get the yolk integrated into the rest of the cocktail. Next, we're gonna fill our cons glass three quarter of the way up with crushed ice before we roll the cocktail back and forth into the original glass. Now that we've done that, we're gonna top it with some more crushed ice before we garnish the cocktail. Now we're gonna be garnishing that cocktail with the citrus mohawk as well as a cocktail cherry. And there you have it, folks. The golden age. A cocktail looks weird on paper, but delicious on the palate. I urge you to give it a try. Cheers. Now the last drink that we're gonna be making was the only vodka cocktail on the opening menu at the Violet Hour. And it hits the taste buds like a bittersweet vodka Paloma. Now the reason why I chose this drink specifically was because I felt like it had a very simple build and based on that build, Maloney actually says in the book that the cocktail works just as well with gin or tequila in place of the vodka. And I think that that is in itself a great exercise as you can make three cocktails, one with each of those spirits and you can kind of bounce in between the three of them tasting what flavors are accentuated based off of the spirit that's in there. Then if you really wanted to have some fun, you could even actually make the cocktail with three different gins, all different styles, and then compare and contrast what each of the gins brings to the mix. No pun intended. For instance, Hendrix, Tanqueray, and St. George Terroir will all bring completely different things to the final cocktail, yet technically on paper, they're all still the same drink. But then again, if you're not trying to get geeky with it, you can make the original with vodka, and you will be in for a delicious and tasty treat. But enough of me nerding out, let's go ahead and make an Ask the Collins. To make one, first we start out with three quarter ounce lime juice, followed up with an ounce of grapefruit, three quarter ounce simple syrup, as well as a quarter ounce of Campari. Lastly, as I mentioned before, we're gonna be adding vodka. In this case, it's two ounces. Now it's time to add some ice to our tin and give it a good shake. Now before we strain into our glass, first we're gonna add about one ounce of club soda to the bottom of our cons glass and then pour the rest of the mixture on top. Now the drink's done, it's time to garnish it with the lime wheel. And there you have it folks, the Ask the Collins. Bittersweet, citrusy, and oh so refreshing. I don't know how, but I taste vanilla. It tastes like there's vanilla in this. It almost reminds me of like Capaletti or something, but there's only a quarter ounce of Campari in here, so it's not like you could be getting it from there. I don't know. Now there you have it folks, three cocktails that we're showcasing out of Toby Maloney's book, The Bartender's Manifesto, which by the way, is available now for purchase. 
And if you'd like to purchase it, we actually have a link for it down in the episode description that you can click on and purchase for yourself. But with that said, are there any other cocktail books out there that you would like us to feature on a future episode of Cocktail Limelight? If so, leave them in the comments below and who knows, maybe it'll be featured in a future episode. But with that said, be sure to muddle that like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to dive deeper into the world of craft cocktails, be sure to check out the Bartender Large podcast, which I host on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else where quality podcasts are found. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you again next week.